In the last stream, we were working on setting up our mob farm over here behind our resource compacting drawers. And since the end of the last stream, this has been chugging along quite nicely. There is a slight mistake in the center of the vector plates there, which has created a bit of a never ending trap for certain mobs. We should definitely look at fixing that at some point, but for the most part, as you can see, that does seem to work itself out eventually. And between streams, this has been chugging away and we now have a bunch of resources in here ready for us to use moving forward. Speaking of which, one suggestion that I have received between streams that I actually think is pretty nifty relates to our new bronze pickaxe and hatchet because the one downside to our new upgraded tools is that they are a little bit harder to repair because now if we want to repair either of them, the default way is we go and we get some copper, we get some tin, we put that copper and tin into the smeltery, we make sure there's fuel in the smeltery to turn it into bronze, and then we pull that bronze out in ingot form to then combine it in the Tinker's Anvil to repair our tool. However, what has been brought to my attention is the string binder. If we take a blank pattern and we put it into the part builder, we can then select the tool binding and we can get a string tool binding. If we then add that to our tool, for example, our bronze pickaxe here, it does nothing to the stats you'll see here, no stats, and you'll see on the right there, nothing changes when we add this or take it away. The only thing that does change is this modifier down here. We get the stringy one modifier, which says like cheese, but less tasty, tool can be repaired using string. And so if we go ahead and take this, we can also go ahead and do the same thing again. I did some testing between streams, hence why we have one extra of them. And basically now going forward, if we want to repair our tool, all we have to do is place it in the Tinker's Anvil with some string and boom, at the cost of just a little bit of string, which we're getting for free anyway via our mob farm, we can fully repair our tools. Nice. Speaking of tools, I think the first thing that we're going to work on in today's stream is probably getting the cleaver that we mentioned at the end of the last stream, because the very first thing we're going to have to do here is get some Wither Skeleton Skulls. Those are going to allow us to get the Wither Skeleton Spawn Bee, and once we have the Wither Skeleton Spawn Bee, we can of course get more Wither Skeleton Skulls that way, which in the future is going to allow us to get unlimited Nether Stars, which is kind of the point of today's stream. I'm hoping that by the end of this episode, we will have at least one Nether Star, with ideally the ability to get as many of them as we like. And so, if we're gonna make the cleaver, we first of all have to pick which material we're going to go with. Looking at all of the options between stream, I actually think steel is a pretty good choice here, at least for the blade. I don't think we're going to make the whole thing out of steel, mostly because I don't think that's the most optimal build, but also because we don't actually have that much steel lying around. And if we take a little bit of a look forward to some other items that we're going to be making today, such as the crusher here, which is what we're going to use to kill the wither, this does require an advanced machine frame. The advanced machine frame is made with a bunch of items, but the key one that we need to focus on is the pity machine frame. This is kind of the core machine frame for industrial foregoing. We're going to need to make quite a few of these. To make it, we need this waxed machine frame, which also requires a block of steel. And so we are going to need quite a few blocks of steel today in order to progress. And so I really don't want to use all of our steel early on making a cleaver. Instead, what we'll do is we'll make the sword blade, the large sword blade for the cleaver out of steel. And we'll make the other parts, I think, out of some other materials. For example, I think using the string for the binder still makes a ton of sense. I think using wood for the handle also makes a ton of sense. And then we can also look at uh, potentially using some other metals for the large plate. Because again, in here, if we want to make the cleaver, we need one broad blade, which we'll make from steel, two tough handles, and then one large plate. Okay, so after doing a bit more digging into different materials, I actually think that this Nahuatl material, I hope I'm pronouncing that somewhat close to correctly, but I think this might actually be our best option because it's not particularly difficult to make and it works pretty well for all of the different parts. Initially, I was just going to use it for the large plate, but then looking at the tough handle and the broad blade, I think that just overall, this is gonna be our best material for the whole cleaver. The big benefit of all of these is the attack damage. You'll see that the large plate has an attack damage of three, and the broad blade also has an attack damage of three, which is even better than the steel blade that I was contemplating using a second ago. This has an attack damage of 2.75. The durability is a lot lower, 
but it's actually easier to make, at least from a resource perspective. All we have to do is make wooden versions of all of the different parts that we need, and then pull Molten Obsidian over the top of those parts. And as we've seen before, Molten Obsidian, super easy to get into the smeltery. It's just lava and water. And we've got basically an infinite amount of both lava and water. And so really all we should have to do is take some blank patterns, take some wood. We're probably gonna need more than 15 planks, let me quickly use my chisel to turn these back into planks as well. That might be enough. Over in the part builder, let's swap out the string for wood, and then let's see if we can't get the broad blade, a large plate, and two tough handles. Nice. And then from there, all we have to do is bring a bunch of lava and water over into the smeltering in order to get enough molten obsidian to make two of the tough handles, one large plate, and one broad blade. That means that we need eight, plus four is 12, plus six, is 18. And so if we can get 18 blocks worth of obsidian in there, we can then just pull all of those out over the different wooden parts. And that should basically be our cleaver taken care of. And not too long later, we're just waiting on the broad blade to cool down inside of the casting table here. But other than that, we actually have everything else that we need. And so should be able to put this together. Uh, over in here, we are after the broad blade. I can put these in, but I'm fairly certain that the anvil does reset, unfortunately, when you leave and come back. Oh no, it holds it in the right place. Good stuff. Boom, Nautil cleaver. Nice. So this thing is real big, but it's also pretty slow. The cleaver just by default is a pretty slow tool. I've seen ones that are much slower, but it does have a pretty high attack damage, which is really what we're after. We could look at making the attack damage even higher, again, if we had more nether quartz. Unfortunately, right now, we still don't have that much nether quartz, and so, like we saw before, we still can't really increase the attack damage on this. One thing we could do is we could add some redstone to the cleaver to increase its attack speed. If I place this in here and add redstone, that adds haste to the sword. And you'll see, again, as per usual, it does take up one of the upgrade slots, but it does allow us to increase the attack speed from... 0.81 to 0.85 it's a very small increase although i'm fairly certain if i do this is that oh, that's a full upgrade yeah we could go up to haste 2 i don't know if that was the most worthwhile upgrade in the world because it's still pretty slow but it is marginally faster than it was previously so now the only thing that we really need in order to not die instantly as soon as we head on through into the nether is some kind of armor Thankfully, we do have almost 300 diamonds here, and so we should be able to very quickly throw together a full set of standard diamond armor, if we do something like this, and I think that should be good enough for fighting some wither skeletons. And so, real quick, I guess, let's head on through into the nether. Thankfully, we do spawn directly inside of a nether fortress, and so I don't think it should be too hard for us to find some wither skeletons to kill. The hardest part is mostly going to be avoiding the blazers, although I also don't think that should be too difficult for us. And if we do see any blazers, we can always just kill them. There are a lot of wither skeletons here, which is very nice indeed. We could have maybe done with some kind of shield. That already did get us two necrotic bones and two wither skeleton fragments. Hello, my friend. It is quite helpful that the wither skeletons do follow us out like this. Ideally, we're looking for a couple of wither skeleton skulls. If we can get three... Thank you. Thank you. We do want to be careful of the uh, the withering effect there. That can catch us out if we're not careful with the food. Specifically here, we are looking to get the uh, Wither Skeleton Spawn Bee Egg. Ideally, we get two of them, which means basically we just need to get two Wither Skeleton Skulls. We ideally probably want to get a few more, though, because it would be more beneficial, I think, if we could get potentially five skulls. That way, we could get two bees that we can breed together in the future, but we'd also have enough skulls to spawn our first Wither as well. Okay, so we killed a couple of wither skeletons and didn't get any actual skulls. We did get quite a few of these wither skull fragments, which eventually can be crafted into wither skeleton skulls. This makes getting the skulls, thankfully, a fair bit easier. We did kill, I think, two blazers and did get a mob head from that. But what we can do now that we have some of these necrotic bones is we can look at upgrading the severing two that's currently on our sword to severing three, four, and potentially even to severing five. You'll see right here, it says that the maximum is five. We just need necrotic bones, copper ingots, and TNT. Copper ingots we have in abundance. We've got over 2,000 of them. And then as for TNT, we should be able to make that fairly easily because we've also got 2,000 gunpowder as well. And so over in the anvil, if we throw our cleaver in with two necrotic bones, one TNT, 
and some copper, that's going to allow us to use one of our upgrades to go from severing two to severing three, which is going to even further increase our chances of getting mob heads. On top of that, I think what we can do here is we can take a mob head and put that on our sword. That's going to give us just an extra upgrade slot. You'll see here we go from having zero to having one. And so here we could do the same thing again. We could use that extra slot to get yet another severing that would take us from severing three to severing four. Alternatively, though, what I think might be a better use of our extra slot is to do the same thing that we did with our iron sword and add luck to the cleaver as well. That is not going to just increase the number of mob heads that we get, but it's also hopefully going to increase the number of wither skull fragments that we get so that even if we don't get lucky and get any of the wither skeleton skulls, we should get more of these fragments for every wither skeleton that we kill, thus making it just a little easier for us to get all the skulls we're after. Just like before, here we need two blocks of lapis, which we do have, one and two. We also need to get two more copper ingots, which we've already got on us, and of course, one cornflower, of which we've got three. And so back over here, just like before, we'll do you, you, two of you, and two of you. Nice. One final thing that we've not done yet that we definitely should do now that we're actually fighting hostile mobs is we should look at eating some of the honeycomb available in here because we do have a mod installed that gives us more hearts for the wider variety of food that we eat. So the more different kinds of food that we eat, the more hearts we get, and all of these honeycombs can be eaten. And so it's going to be in our best interest to eat at least one of each comb. And then eventually, if we do that with enough combs, we should get extra hearts for it. Let me get a few more of these, and let's run around a little bit to try and get hungry enough to actually eat these, and let's see if we can't actually see this in action. Just like that. What a unique flavor. We've gained two hearts. Also, chat is right here. Look takes up the ability slot, not the upgrade slot. We mentioned that last time. And so we do actually still have space to do this. And so now we have look and we have the severing four as well. Perfect. All right, and not too long later, we now have six Wither Skeleton Skulls, along with 28 Wither Skeleton Skull Fragments, and also 41 Necrotic Bones here, not that those are particularly useful for us. And so now that we have those, we should be able to get the Wither Skeleton B Spawn Eggs. Again, ideally two of them, so that going forward, we can always breed more of them. To do that, of course, we need to get ourselves the skeleton B nectar block because last episode we did get these two skeleton B spawn eggs and now if we want to get the wither skeleton B spawn eggs we need the skeleton bees to be able to pollinate and then fly over the wither skeleton skulls for that we need the skeleton B nectar block and thankfully we have everything we need for this bone blocks are super easy especially now that we have a mob farm uh, over in here we have got over 4,000 bones. The slimy honeycombs we have been getting between streams from this hive over here with this slimy bee. And so I've gone ahead and thrown all of those together into our heated jar to get us the skeleton bee nectar block. Nice. And so basically all we are going to do here is we're going to replace our pre-existing slimy bee over here with the brand new skeleton bee. And of course, we're also going to replace the slimy bee nectar block with the skeleton bee nectar block. We're going to place down at least two wither skeleton skulls, place down at least one skeleton bee spawn egg. And as this guy flies over, just like we've seen a couple of times now, we should hopefully get our first two wither skeleton bee spawn eggs. And then in order for these guys to pollinate, we are going to need to get a wither skeleton bee nectar block. This again is not too bad. It requires two skeleton honeycomb blocks, which again, is going to take a minute but we can probably get that from here, especially if we throw down both of our skeleton bees that should come in twice as fast. And then from there, we should be able to start getting the wither skeleton honeycomb, and we can use that going forward to get as many wither skeleton skulls as we like. Now, before we do that, there's quite a bit of other work that needs to be done. As I mentioned a second ago, if we're going to kill the wither, we do have a couple of options. We could, of course, try and kill it the old-fashioned way and just do it with our sword. I don't think that's going to be a particularly good idea. We could also try and kill it with the mob masher, but I also don't think that's going to be a particularly good idea either, because although the mob masher itself, I do believe, is wither proof, the redstone signal that you have to apply to the mob masher makes it quite hard to use because the wither will just keep destroying that redstone signal over and over again and so it's going to be quite finicky whereas the crusher from industrial foregoing is more expensive but it can be placed outside of the box that you kill the wither in like you can put this outside of some witherproof blocks and then put the wither inside and still be able to kill it 
And on top of that, it's just much easier in that it covers a large area. You don't have to funnel the wither to one specific place like you do with the Mob Crusher. The only downside to the Mob Crusher is that it is pretty expensive to make. To do this, we need to get an advanced machine frame. For that, we need a dissolution chamber. And we also have to upgrade from a simple machine frame, which requires a pity machine frame. The pity machine frame requires that we get into pneumatic craft because to make it, we need to put some waxed machine blocks into a pressure chamber. As we saw earlier, the waxed machine blocks here do require steel. The rest of the ingredients are not too bad. It also requires eight trimmed planks. These are made with waxed planks and beeswax, and the waxed planks are made with beeswax and planks. Now, planks wise, we're actually pretty low, as we saw earlier on wood. Wax wise, however, we have got a ton of the stuff thanks to our centrifuge system. And so real quick, let me do a little bit of tree chopping to get a bunch of wood. And then we'll also look at getting that pressure chamber up and running, which thankfully is not too difficult. The pressure chamber is made up of a few components, the pressure chamber wall, the pressure chamber valve, optionally, but I think ideally the pressure chamber interface, and then also optionally some pressure chamber glass. Most of these are made in kind of the same way. They mostly just require a pressure chamber wall, and the pressure chamber wall here is made with reinforced bricks. These are made with reinforced stone, and these are made with a regular stone and compressed iron. To start with, compressed iron is made by blowing up iron. This is not the most optimal way of doing it. Once we have the pressure chamber, we can turn one iron into one compressed iron. But to start with, we do have to do it this way. And you'll see, unfortunately, there is a material loss rate of 20% here. So we are going to lose some of the iron to this process. Thankfully, we've got a ton of iron to the point where I don't really think it's gonna matter too much. And so I think what we should be able to do here is take our TNT, take our iron, take our lever. The only tricky part is doing this in a space that's not going to destroy a different part of our base. And so what I might do here is I might do something a little funky and then I might just kind of build a bit of a platform like this, place the TNT down up at the top of this platform because hopefully that's far enough away to where it's not going to damage our base underneath. And then if we do this, 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 and this, that should, hopefully, get us, and we can also just do this after the fact, some compressed iron. Nice, and we got 49, which is perfect. And so now, if we head on back over into here, we should be able to combine that with some of the stone that we got previously from smelting our triple compressed stone. And if we do something like this, and like this, we can then get a bunch of reinforced stone, and from there, we can go ahead and craft up a bunch of reinforced bricks, and then those reinforced bricks can be used to make pressure chamber wool. And already, this is probably too much pressure chamber wool because the pressure chamber isn't actually that big. It's a uh, three by three by three multi-block. I could do with filling in this area of the platform or maybe even building another set of uh, platforms further out because right now we don't really have a good place to put this. But temporarily, if we do something like this, the basic pressure chamber is a three by three by three cube with the center left hollow. Now in order for it to actually form, we do need to have that pressure chamber valve, this one right here, which is just compressed iron and a pressure tube, or it's a pressure tube with some pressure chamber wall. I think the second recipe is probably going to be easier. We don't really need 16 of these. And by that, I mean the third recipe here, which is just a one-to-one. -one. So this does require pressure tubing. This is super easy to make. It is two compressed iron and a glass. Nice. We'll then go ahead and make one valve, which is all we really need. And then as far as the pressure chamber interface here, this is also so easy that I feel like we might as well make it. Again, it's not strictly required, but is recommended by me. And so now back over here, let's go ahead and throw down our pressure chamber valve. In doing so, we should complete the multi-block structure. We do, you'll know it's worked when all the textures connect. And then over on the sides here, we can put down our pressure chamber interface like this, and we can also put down a pressure chamber interface like this. Now we do want these facing in different directions. I think right now they're both set to, uh, to face the same way. So I think what I want to do is place down the second one from the inside like that. So the blue is pointing in and the orange is, uh, is pointing out. That way we can use one of these to pump items into the pressure chamber and we can use the other to bring items out of the pressure chamber. The reason you don't technically need these is you can just break the walls, throw the items that you want to uh, to compress into the middle and then build the multi-block back again. That does work, but in doing that, you do lose a lot of pressure. And so I really don't recommend it as a, as a long-term solution. 
Now, in terms of getting pressure into the pressure chamber here, we do need some kind of pressure generating device. For us, that is gonna start with the air compressor. Super easy to make, the only thing we're missing is a furnace, which again, is pretty easy to make, but does require some compressed cobblestone. Boom, and boom. That should be everything for our first air compressor. This is a super basic way of generating compressed air. Basically, we just burn fuel, and burning that fuel generates pressure. And so over here, if we do something like this, you'll see the back of this compressor connects to this pressure tube. This pressure tube connects to the pressure valve. You could put the air compressor directly onto the pressure chamber valve here, but doing it this way allows us to add more of these compressors later on down the line, if that's something that we want to do. And so now if we put fuel into here, we're going to slowly but surely build pressure on this gauge on the right. And for us, we are specifically looking to get to between four and five bar of pressure to allow us to transform these waxed machine blocks into PT machine blocks. Now, you do want to be careful here because if the pressure goes too high, then things will start to explode. Usually it's the air compressor or the associated tubing that explodes first. It's not really the pressure chamber that will do the exploding. Although if the pressure in the pressure chamber gets too high, it will also explode. So do be careful of that. Right now this is going up very slowly. And so I don't think we really have too much to worry about just yet. However, you can make a safety valve or a safety tube module, which doesn't look too expensive actually. It requires one pressure gauge, which is just gold and compressed iron, and then two levers and a pressure tube. The idea behind this is that it will release pressure if the pressure gets too high. So if the pressure enters that red zone, then instead of blowing up, we'll just hear a faint hissing as some of the uh, pressure is released. And so you basically place this down onto whichever pipe you want. I'm gonna put it right about here. And so now if the pressure gets too high, you'll see the threshold here is 4.9 bar. And so as soon as it gets to five bar, it will release pressure until it goes below 4.9 bar and then it will stop. And it'll keep doing that basically forever. Now, I do think it is probably gonna be in our best interest to make at least one more, if not two more of these air compressors, if for no other reason than to just make this a little bit faster because right now it's a little slow and thankfully the air compressors are really not that expensive to make. And so if we do this and this, we can then throw some coal in here and in here and we should start to see this going up a little bit faster than it was before. Now, in order to get items into the interfaces here, unfortunately you can't just place them in manually. And so we are going to need either some kind of item pipe or a hopper. The item pipes are actually not too difficult to make in this pack. We need iron ingots, droppers, and redstone. The droppers are also pretty straightforward. And so we'll get a set of item pipes. These work in the exact same way as the fluid pipes that we're using over on this side. And you could use these in place of modular routers. The reason that I haven't used them for things like our centrifuges and for our uh, distribution is that one, I think the modular routers are cooler, but two, in this pack, the pipe upgrades have been made a fair bit more expensive. Even making the basic pipe upgrade in this pack requires you pull molten iron over a green double arrow. This green double arrow requires molten emerald, and as of right now, we don't even have emeralds. We could get emerald bees, I think, fairly easily and make that happen, but the whole process is just a bit more convoluted than it normally is. Thankfully, for our purposes here, we really only require a very slow insertion and extraction, and so for that, the basic item pipes are gonna do just fine. So really, all I I'm gonna do here is grab two standard Minecraft chests, one, two. We'll put one of those down on the left side here. We'll put it maybe right about there. And we'll put another one down over on the right side, right about here. Uh, this one is set to, I don't know which one is in and out. Blue is in and orange is out, which I believe means that this is in and this is out. Chem might be right here and I think you might be able to just put a chest on the output slot like, this, and that might auto push to the output slot. I think that's correct. Over here though, you do need some kind of pipe or hopper to make that work. Just like before, you right click with the wrench to make this extract. And so now we're getting a little higher on the pressure there. We just need to make a couple of these waxed machine blocks in order to transform them into the pity machine frames. So as we saw, we need more wood and a quick stack of oak logs later. Let's craft those down into planks. And then let's see if we, uh, first of all, can't clear our inventory a little bit. And then from there, can I get some of these wax planks? I can. Can I craft some wax planks into trimmed wax planks? I totally can. And can I craft those into wax machine blocks? I can. We'll make a few of these. How many steel blocks do we have available to us? We've got eight more. I'll start by making maybe four of these, and then we can always make more should we need them in the future. So over here, 
how are we doing on pressure? We are within the range, so we're between four and five, which is perfect, which means I can put these in here. Those are gonna get extracted down into here. This is where the pressure chamber glass would be quite useful, because let's see what's going on inside here. But we should basically see the items get transformed into the pity machine frame. Nice. And we'll also see momentarily here, once we get to five bar, we should start to hear the, uh, the hissing sound of the pressure being relieved so that we don't spend really any time at all in this, uh, this red danger zone. Cool, look at that, it's working. Nice. Uh, and so I guess with that in mind, we can probably take the call out here because having the call in there isn't doing anything other than just wasting it because we're just turning it into air and then releasing that air into the atmosphere. But now that we have these pity machine frames, we can get started with industrial foregoing. For them, we are going to need to get plastic. And plastic requires dry rubber. Dry rubber requires tiny dry rubber, which we can get initially via a tree fluid extractor, which is called just a fluid extractor in this version of industrial foregoing. The fluid extractor is made with the pity machine frame, four iron, one regular old Minecraft piston, along with some cobblestone and a gold pressure plate. Nice, and we're probably going to need more than one of these because if memory serves me right, these are incredibly, incredibly slow. The idea here is you place this down and as it says in the tooltip here, power is optional, but it will go faster with power. If we put wood down in front of it, it is going to start sucking latex out of that wood. You'll see right now there's two millibuckets in there and every time that this green processing bar hits zero, it provides us with a few millibuckets of latex. Now, I do believe, if I'm not mistaken, that there are better woods and worse woods that you can use in terms of generating latex. For example here, the standard oak that we're using gives you two millibuckets every 12 ticks, and you get an average of 3,200 millibuckets per log. The logs don't last forever, by the way, you'll see this one is breaking already, and so you do have to replace the log periodically, but the acacia log here provides you double the amount. You get four millibuckets per 12 ticks as opposed to two. And so it's probably gonna be well worth us seeing if we can't get some acacia logs, which we should be able to do if we have some acacia samplings over in one of these chests, which if memory serves me right, I think we do. Nice, and so we'll take these. And again, it's also probably gonna be worthwhile us getting a couple more of these fluid extractors, or at the very least, look at moving kind of these over to our current power generation, because right now we are producing excess power we're not using it efficiently, but currently we have five dynamos. Each one of these dynamos is producing, uh, is capable of producing 10 RF per tick more than we currently need because each centrifuge only requires 30. Each dynamo can make 40. And so in theory, with all five of these combined, we have an extra 50 redstone flux per tick available for us to use. And I don't think that the fluid extractor here really uses that much power. And so we could potentially look at moving these over towards our magmatic dynamos and using those uh, to speed this up a little bit. The reason we're going to need a lot more of them and the reason I'm talking about moving them over to our power situation is because you'll see that it's coming in very slowly. We need 1000 millibuckets of latex in order to make the latex processing unit here, which is then used to turn latex into tiny dry rubber. And I can't remember the exact conversion, but we do also need even more latex than to make tiny dry rubber. And as we saw a second ago, it takes nine tiny dry rubber to make one dry rubber and one dry rubber to make one plastic. Thankfully, most machines only need two plastic, but we are going to need a couple of machines, which means we're going to need quite a lot of tiny dry rubber. And so let's quickly get some acacia wood. And let's also see, I think, about getting some energy pipes, which you guessed it, much like the item pipes and the fluid pipes kind of work in the same way. What these are going to allow us to do is, these are going to allow us to kind of harness some of the excess power generated by these dynamos. Basically what I'm thinking is, if we break these dynamos, that is going to lose us a little bit of lava here. I don't think they retain their lava, but what we should be able to do is we should be able, if I get rid of this dirt here, to place down these energy pipes down onto the back of our centrifuges like this. And then we should be able to kind of bring all of our magmatic dynamos over to the center and kind of centralize our power generation. So uh, if I put these down the right way, which is like this and like this, we can then hopefully move these pipes and just like before, now that's not right at all, just like before, and we can also make a wrench, I need to make a wrench so I can like kind of rotate these because right now we have to get them down the right way the first time, which is not ideal. But if we go ahead and set these to extract like this, each one of these is able to extract 256 redstone flux per tick, as you can see at the top, which is more than enough for our current setup. And so real quick, if I 
Don't want to do that. Is that going to break all of the pipes? No, this is perfect. We do need to keep this pipe here, of course, for our lava tank, but all of the rest of the pipes here can be redistributed, and we do get a few extra, which is nice, to the dynamos, like this. Cool. The benefit, as I mentioned a second ago, is that we should now be able to add our tree fluid extractor to this line somewhere, at least temporarily until we get a better source of power. I'm not going to break the one that we currently have down because that one will lose the latex that we've already made. If I move it instead, we'll make a second one here. We'll place this one down over on the power line and we'll use some acacia on this one to try and really increase the amount of latex that we're producing. All right, and a few acacia logs later, you'll see now this is filling up faster. We get 12 millibuckets per time and the green bar goes down faster. That's the benefit of adding power here. We just get the 12 millibuckets more quickly than we do with this guy over here. And so what I think we should probably do is we should probably grab another one of these jumbo tanks. Again, they are thankfully super easy to make, especially given how much fluid they can hold. We'll take four of these, make one of these, and then using the fluid pipes that we had left over from the past, what we should be able to do is kind of extract out of here into the jumbo tank. The jumbo tank, thankfully, does retain its inventory. And then what we'll do is we'll move this and we'll get rid of this, I guess. We'll put that back into the system. We'll move this over and we'll move the jumbo tank over as well. And we'll have all of the fluid extractors pumping into the same jumbo tank. So if I do this, uh, we can put the jumbo tank down. Let's say right about here. And then we'll have this connect up to these two like this. And if we set those both to extract, I don't want you to extract. And I don't want you to extract. Instead, I want you and you. Perfect. And we'll also do this as well. I'm hoping we've got enough power to keep this all going. I think we should. Right now, this is not yet filled up with lava, but we can jumpstart that, of course, with a bucket like so. It will get it eventually, but the other uh, way that the jars work is that they fill the middle ones first, and then they work their way out to the latter ones after. But hopefully, this should start to generate us some latex fairly quickly. Once we've got at least one bucket worth of latex, we can take that, bring it back over here, if memory serves me right, we also need a bucket of water as well, but we should now be able to use that to make ourselves the latex processing unit. The latex processing unit right here requires another PD machine frame, the water, the latex, a block of redstone, and of course, a standard Minecraft furnace. Boom and boom. Nice. This guy does require power, so we'll throw that down, I guess, for now, right about here. And this one, we could probably do with putting this elsewhere, actually, because this one requires both latex and water in order to function and so i think ideally what we might want to do is potentially move things around here because i think we probably want this to go down and we probably want all of the latex to go in here really first before it goes anywhere else and so we'll get rid of this for now we'll have all the latex go into the latex processing tank and we can also uh, i guess kind of do something like this as well to pump all of our current latex out of here around into the latex processing unit as well. And then from there, we can probably just go ahead and make another sink. Boom. And I think we'll put it at the back here. Boom. Nice. So having this connected shouldn't be a problem. Let's do this right here. Again, having this connected also shouldn't be a problem, but I'll disconnect it just to be safe. Did we get lava in here? We didn't, thankfully. And boom. All right, that should fill up with both latex and water. And then I guess the other uh, thing I didn't actually factor in here is that we do also need to get power to this as well, which is a little bit uh, finicky with the way that I've set this up. It is doable, albeit somewhat janky. I can do something like this that will provide power, but it does look uh, substantially worse than it did previously. But what we'll see now is that this is going to take 100 millibuckets of latex to produce one tiny dry rubber. And so given that we do have 800 more millibuckets in here, we will get to nine tiny dry rubber, but that's just barely enough to get one dry rubber, which will then get us one plastic. And again, if we look a little further ahead here, we need to get the crusher, which requires two plastic. In order to make the crusher, we need the advanced machine frame, which is two more. That's four in total. The symbol machine frame is another two, so that's six. And then the dissolution chamber required to make all of this is two more. So we need, I think, eight plastic in order to make this happen. Although that's not even it, because in order to make the advanced machine frame, we need pink slime. Pink slime is made using the mob slaughter factory, this guy right here. For that, you guessed it, two more. So we need 10 plastic in total, but this is coming in somewhat quickly and so hopefully shouldn't take too long. 
One nifty little feature that the Twitch chat has just told me about is that we can basically turn one of our modular routers here into a block placer. The block placer, which I think is actually just called a placer module, this guy right here, is fairly straightforward. We need one dirt, one dispenser, which of course we don't have any bows. All of our bows are being deleted, but we can make one fairly quickly. Boom and boom. And I think in here we can tell this to place. We might need to make two of these if we want to place on two sides, which I think we do want to do because we have the two extractors. So let's do this. We're gonna have one of these placed on the left, one of these placed on the right. And basically I think all we should need to do here is take our modular router, place it down between the two acacia logs, put in the two placer modules, and just to test it, if I go ahead and break this and break this, by the way, you can't cheese this. You'll notice if I put this down again, it goes straight back to the same progress level. So it's not like you can just break these and replace them and kind of restart again. You do need to use more logs going forward. But uh, what I wanna test is if I put the acacia logs in here, Look at that, it places them down, which is perfect. And so now, as soon as these two do break, the modular router in the middle here is gonna be ready to put down another two directly after these are broken, which should continue the process of latex production, and in turn, is gonna continue the process of dry rubber production. And then really one final thing we could do here is we could get yet another compacting drawer, because the compacting drawer is just going to save us that one extra step of crafting the tiny dry rubber into actual dry rubber because all we should have to do here is grab one of our item pipes and extract from the latex processing unit out into our compacting drawer like this and that should provide the tiny dry rubber i was hoping in both tiny dry rubber and in dry rubber form but i guess for some reason that does not work let me interesting i really thought much like redstone and lapis and diamonds and coal and everything like that i thought this would work but it doesn't that's unfortunate. While we wait for all this rubber to come in though, what we can do is we can start work on that mob slaughter factory, which is going to allow us to get the pink slime required in order to make the advanced machine frame here for that crusher. And so for that, all we need to do is take some of the dry rubber, smelt that down into plastic, and then we're gonna craft that along with two iron swords. Pretty easy. In fact, do we still have some from before? We do, perfect. I made too many when we set up our first mob farm two iron axes, and then again, another pity machine frame, a gold gear, which is, with all of our gears so far, we are gonna have to make using the smeltery. That's not a problem. We can throw four gold into there and then kind of hope that none of this other stuff in here is going to mix with the gold. I don't think it's going to, so we should be fine. Take our two plastic. Do we still have another pity machine frame? We do, we have exactly one more, perfect. And so we're just missing that gold gear, which we can make just as soon as we put another bucket or four of lava into the smeltery. There's our gold gear, and that should be our mob slaughter factory. Cool. So this is gonna go down over here, and we're gonna use it to uh, to kill our mobs. Now, of course, we don't need to use it to kill our mobs because we do have our mob measure, but the idea here is that we have to use it because we need to get the pink slime, and by killing mobs with this, we will start to get uh, both pink slime and liquid meat. So the trickiest part here is gonna be getting this thing down. I don't know if I put that down in the right way, if we open it up, you can click show working area. And right now I have got this down in the right place, but you'll see the working area is very, very small. The working area is just the two blocks or three blocks, sorry, in front of the mob slaughter factory. We need to make that working area much, much bigger. And to do that, if we go to at industrial foregoing, we need to make some of these range add-ons. And these range add-ons here are made in the dissolution chamber. So we are gonna have to make this after all. That should be fine. Let me quickly throw four diamonds here into the smeltery. That's going to allow us to make the diamond gear. That apparently requires a higher tier of heat, which I should not be surprised at. What do we need here? We need 1,450, which means we need more blazing blood. That is, of course, fine. We do have our DNA spawner, which I think is currently in our uh, little beehive over there. And we can, of course, get more of the blaze DNA to, uh, to get more blaze in there, to get more blaze blood, and to melt the diamonds. That is fine. How are we doing over here on plastic? Eight is not particularly great, unfortunately. And so we're kind of gonna have to wait a little longer for that to come in before we can actually make the dissolution chamber and make that range bigger. But once that range is big enough, uh, we do also need to provide power to this and that will allow us to start killing these mobs without the use of the mob masher. In fact, we'll probably get rid of the redstone signal on that for the time being. And that will allow us to start getting that little bit of pink slime needed for the machine block there. Thankfully, there's no rush on that. Uh, we're still just waiting on the uh, plastic more than anything. There are other things we need though here. For example, we do need to get 
the netherite scrap here to make the advanced machine frame. And in order to get the netherite scrap, I think our easiest option is gonna be the ancient bee. This shouldn't be too hard for us to get. It's just the obsidian bee bred with the nether bee. I did take the nether bee out earlier and we do have the obsidian bee hiding around over in here. So if we quickly steal you, we should be able to breed both of these together. The obsidian bee, of course, wants obsidian, and the nether bee just wants a little bit of netherrack. Do we have any netherrack in here? We do not, and that's because we've not actually used our nether bee just yet, which is not ideal. I do think we need to get this guy up and running. He pollinates, of course, on the nether bee nectar block. For that, we need some compressed netherrack and obsidian. The netherrack, I think we make in the jars, right? We totally do, of course, right. That is actually completely fine. So we can actually breed these guys together and we can get our ancient bee up and running. The reason why we also want to get the nether bee though is that I'm fairly certain that we need the nether bee honeycomb here to make the nether honeycomb blocks, which are then required in the making of the ancient bee nectar block. So that's obviously gonna be needed if we're gonna get the ancient bee to actually produce any ancient combs, which we can then turn into netherite scrap. And so real quick, let's grab one bucket of lava from over here. We'll then combine that again with one piece of redstone to get us one bit of netherrack. Boom, boom, and was it in here? Nope, it's in over here with no heat and start. That's gonna get us one bit of netherrack. That's going to allow us to breed these. And then I think once we've got that going, we'll probably also look at getting the uh, two compressed netherrack. That's just 18 lava buckets and 18 redstone. Again, really shouldn't be an issue. And then we just need to find a place to put the nether bee nectar block in our little apartment situation over here so that our nether bee can start producing honeycomb for us to use later on down the line for that uh, ancient bee nectar block. For now though, let's grab one obsidian. Let's make sure we also have our bee box on us. We do indeed. Uh, between streams, I did take all the marble bees out of there and put them into bee jars just to make things a little bit easier for us. Boom, 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 and boom. And there we go. There's our little ancient bee. Perfect. So let's go ahead and get the obsidian bee back in his room. Let's get the nether bee set up in one of his rooms, and let's start generating some nether combs so that we can also get the ancient bee going in a room as well. Okay, so a little bit more blazing blood later. We've melted these diamonds down. We can pull those out into the gear cast. We also now have a bunch more tiny dry rubber over here. We've got 53, which is pretty good. I think 72 is the number we need to get all of the machines that we're after, but that does mean that we're getting closer. So let's start smelting these up. These are gonna be used to make our dissolution chamber. For the dissolution chamber, we are going to need to get another pity machine frame. And so we are gonna have to make a few more of these waxed machine blocks. We also need one for the mob crusher, I believe. And so we'll get at least two more. I'm gonna make a third one just in case there's a machine that I have forgotten about. And just like before, uh, this should still be at the same pressure. The pressure doesn't fall if you're not doing anything with the setup. It will fall a little bit as we do this process right here, as we transform these into the pity machine frames, but hopefully it doesn't use too much. It didn't. Nice. And so we still have enough pressure in there to do that whole craft again in the future. And so now back over here, let's grab our plastic and let's see if we can't make that dissolution chamber. Nice. So we'll throw this down again for now where we have power, which is over here. And we can now look at making some of the range add-ons to increase the range of our mob slaughter factory. Now we don't need to go crazy with this because I'm fairly certain the way that this works is when it says extra range, for example, plus three, I think that gives you plus three in each direction. So right now we kind of get a one by one area. Whereas with the plus three, that will go out three in each direction. So north, south, east, and west. And so let's potentially go with this tier four add-on that requires a little bit of latex, some glass panes, some redstone dust, and some iron nuggets. So latex-wise, that's really gonna be the only tricky part about this. Uh, we're gonna have to get more latex going into this jumbo tank here because we need a full bucket of it in order to make this work. Everything else is gonna be fairly straightforward. Two glass panes, two redstone, and four iron nuggets. All of that, I think we should have, or should have the ability to make. Glass panes, easy enough, take two of those. Redstone, easy enough, take two of those. And iron nuggets, of course, already done. Let's take four of those. and then is everything we need apart from the latex. So we'll wait for the latex to come in. While we wait for that latex to come in, we can look at some kind of power for our mob slaughter factory. One thing that people have been recommending is the magmator from power. Specifically this basic one right here, this kind of works in the exact same way as 
the magmatic dynamo over here. The only difference about the uh, magmator here is it produces a bit more power in that it produces 70 FE per tick as opposed to the 40 here. It doesn't actually produce more power overall. If we look at uh, the lava, the magmator produces the same amount of power. It just produces it faster because you'll see here this produces 10,000 redstone flux for every 100 millibuckets. That's the same as 100,000 redstone flux for every 1,000 millibuckets. And if we check over in the magnetic dynamo, this also produces 100,000 RF for every 1,000 millibuckets. So they produce the same amount of power. The magmator just produces it faster. One thing we could look at getting with the dynamo here is we could look at getting some integral components. These allow us to double the power output of the magnetic dynamo, and they're really not too difficult to make actually we need four invar two redstone two glass and a gold gear and i think that's probably going to be worth investing in the only thing that we might not have is invar and we do have six invar actually so we can make this we just need to get another gold gear i will go ahead and get a few gold gears here we've got a lot of gold actually so i might even go as far as to get like a full stack worth of gold in gold gear form so uh, one thing I will do real quick is I will grab my lava tank. Last time we kind of wasted our excess uh, blazing blood. This time I will not do that because it's a bit of a pain getting more blazes into the uh, blaze spawner. But we can melt a bunch of gold down here. That's going to get us 16 of these gold gears, which is obviously overkill for the five uh, magmatic dynamos that we have. But instead of getting into power just yet, I think it's probably going to be more sensible for us to make just another one of these magmatic dynamos, place it down next to our mob slaughter factory, and then just upgrade it with one of these integral components to bring the power generation up. You'll see here that if we take our first integral component and we place that into this dynamo, it's gonna go, well, it, this is a bad example because this is not producing the max amount of power anyway, but you'll see that its maximum capable production goes from 40 RF per take up to 80, which is good. And so I guess what we could do for now is we could put this integral component into here and then we could take one of our pre-existing dynamos away because that way we're not really taking anything away from this setup we're just making it so that one dynamo is producing enough for two dynamos and so we can relocate one of the dynamos back over here now to do that i'm being told by the twitch chat that uh, i should make the crescent hammer here the reason behind the crescent hammer it is a bit of a pain to make because again we need to get another gear and right now our gears are made in here but the benefit of the crescent hammer is that one it's going to allow us to rotate our dynamo so we don't have to place them down perfectly every time but it's also going to allow us to pick the dynamo up and retain the lava that's already in that dynamo and so let's quickly pull that gear out and then quickly whip up our first crescent hammer over in here boom and then if we shift right click on this end dynamo for example that's going to pick it up and i'm hopeful that that is indeed going to retain the lava that we put into it a second ago and then back over here if we place the dynamo down like this it's pointing the wrong way but if we right click with the crescent hammer we can rotate it to face the right way it didn't retain its inventory, which I, I thought was the case. Uh, I was told by Twitch chat that was not the case, but that's fine. We do have a bunch of lava, and we can, of course, begin filling this thing up like so. Let's quickly go see if we don't have a full bucket worth of latex yet. We are very close, 800 millibuckets. Over here, we did start producing netherrack, and we do have the 18 netherrack required to make two compressed netherrack. Fantastic. That compressed netherrack, obviously, going to be used to make our nether bee nectar block. We just need two obsidian honeycomb blocks. So I'll take two of these. I do think we're going to need even more obsidian honeycomb block, as we saw a second ago, because we need that for the ancient bee nectar block as well, this one right here. So we could definitely do with going and uh, trying to intercept 18 more obsidian honeycomb. Uh, for now, though, let's go ahead and select the nether bee nectar block. And I'll hit start. It's not going to work just yet because we do need to get some honey. But as per usual, the honey, super easy for us to get. Nice. Let's throw you in there. And as soon as this one fails, the next one should succeed. And we should get our nether bee nectar block, at which point we just need to find a place to put it down in the bee apartment complex. Back over here, we now have another bucket of latex. So let's go ahead and reconnect this to continue producing the... Uh, whoops. To continue... Uh, that's not at all what I want to do. Oh, this is not ideal i want to grab you perfect we'll deal with that in a second let me put this in over here that should start producing that iron upgrade let's then take you and put you back in over here and then let's also go ahead and see with f7 where we need torches again because right now we are susceptible to mob spawning which is not ideal 
Perfect. All right. So back over here, you are done. Perfect. Let's take that range add on. And as we put it into the mob slaughter factory, we should see the range on this increase massively. Look at that. Perfect. In fact, it's now much bigger than the box. And so we are good to go. What I will do here is I will go ahead and get rid of that redstone block. We are going to lose that. And by lose that, I mean, it's going to go into here. So we're not going to lose it, which is perfect. Uh, we do need to, by the looks of it, add a couple more items to the, uh, to the filter here. It's not so bad yet that it's a problem because for the most part, it looks like uh, we've still got space, which is good. Not quite sure how chickens ended up in there. Uh, feathers, we definitely do need to add to the wall. We'll do that. Uh, chickens though, I'm hopeful that we don't get too many more of those chicken eggs. We'll see. But uh, over in here, you'll see that we're now generating liquid meat and pink slime. You do get a lot more liquid meat than pink slime, which is not ideal because the pink slime is really what we're after. But what we should be able to do, as we've done many times before, is we should be able to get a couple more of these jumbo tanks, again, preferably with regular glaze. I'm gonna go with eight singularity tanks here to make two jumbo tanks, and then we're gonna use these to store both the pink slime and the liquid meat. So in here, you can actually use these buttons down here to push these liquids out. You don't have to use a fluid pipe. What we're gonna do is we're gonna send meat out to the top, and so if we quickly change these to disable, we're gonna change the top to push. And then for pink slime, we're gonna change that to, I think the left, it says north, let me check. Is this north? This is south, so north might be the other side actually. Let me change this side then to push. And we'll change the rest of these to disable, like that. So now if I put this tank down here, it should start getting filled up with liquid meat, and it is. And if I put one down here, that should hopefully start getting filled up with pink slime. It is, nice. And we can also start looking at this crusher now because we are, I think, basically at the point where this is our next item that we need to make. So as far as the simple machine frame here, we do still have some latex in the dissolution chamber. And so this really shouldn't be too bad. We do need some nether brick. That shouldn't be a problem though, because again, we can get more nether rank using the jar setup over here. We just need two more redstone and two more lava. That's gonna get us two nether rank, which we can then smelt into nether brick. And I think everything else is pretty much good to go. The Twitch chat is right here and that our logs have become stripped, which means they are no longer producing latex. Oh, never mind, they are still producing latex. They're just producing way less latex than they did before. I guess ideally we'd want to set up some kind of breaker system, which I think we could do with these um, breaker modules here. I think we could probably put those in and maybe whitelist the stripped acacia logs. These, again, don't seem too difficult to make. We just need two pickaxes. It looks like any pickaxe will do. I'm assuming that it doesn't matter which kind of pickaxe we go with. If I make two of these, as soon as we craft a few more of these blank modules, can I then set both of these to break this? If I put whitelist and then we split these, and then we say one goes at the left, one goes at the right, and I put both these in, I'm hopeful that will work. We can test it by kind of replacing down the stripped acacia lock. I've taken out the placer modules here just so it doesn't put down more acacia, but if I do this, it breaks it, cool. It does just leave it on the ground, which of course is not ideal, but I think that's better than the strip log just staying there. And so we could just leave it. After five minutes, it will get despawned. We could also look at potentially putting like a hopper down or maybe an absorption hopper to, uh, to collect those items. But for the most part, I'm not too worried about that for the time being. What I'm mostly worried about is just getting as much of the latex as we possibly can to make as much of the tiny dry rubber as is feasible. But in terms of the crusher here, in terms of the simple machine frame, I think we're basically good to go. Let me get that one extra bucket of lava. And we'll throw that again into our tank over here. And let's see if we can't make this happen. We've got iron, we've got gold, thankfully, over in here, we need to pull that out, it's not a problem. Two iron ingots, also fairly straightforward, one and two. Uh, two plastic, we also already have, and then it's just the two nether brick, which we are making. We'll get that smelting over in here, and we'll grab that one extra nether egg that we just put in here. Boom, and over here, we should just be able to throw all of this together. So two nether bricks, two plastic, one gold gear, and two iron ingots, along with a pity machine frame. And it looks like we don't have enough plastic. I, oh, of course we don't, because the, uh, the upgrade took a full bucket. I completely forgot. And so this does only require 250 millibuckets, but unfortunately we're not quite there yet. And so we are gonna have to temporarily redo this little setup here, at least until we get to, uh, to 250 millibuckets, at which point we can then just move the uh, jumbo tank over and use that. Oh, there we go, perfect. 
Didn't take long at all. Let's do this. Let's do this. Replace that down. Quickly steal this guy. And then back over here, if we do something like this and like this, it's a little bit janky, but it should get the job done in terms of making the machine frame. And at that point, it's just a case of getting the advanced machine frame and then we're onto the crusher. And really the only tricky part about the advanced machine frame is the nether scrap, which we can get by smelting ancient debris, which we can get from the ancient comb, which of course we can get from our ancient B. All right, so a little while later and we have our first ancient honeycombs. So we took our nether bees, we took our obsidian bee, the obsidian bee's in here, obviously. The nether bee is now down in here or was down in here with the nether bee nectar block along with the iron and tin bees. Currently the nether bee is in here with this obsidian bee because I've been using that to breed yet more of these ancient bees. And we did go ahead and make the ancient bee nectar block, which was just two of the nether bee honeycomb blocks and two of the obsidian honeycomb bee blocks. And now we have our first bits of ancient honeycomb, which I'm gonna quickly push to the front of the queue here. Um, also, I think we do need to do some upgrading on our modular routers to allow us to actually move all of this stuff out a little bit faster. And I also think we might have some netherrack stuck in there. We do indeed. Let me uh, throw that in there for the time being. But we should start now to get some ancient debris. Unfortunately, it's only a 50% chance that we do get the ancient debris here. So it's not guaranteed, but we can then take that ancient debris, of course, and then smelt it over in here. All this time I have been smelting more plastic. So we are getting more of that as time goes on. And we just need two ancient debris if we're going to get our crusher. Because as we've seen before, the advanced machine frame here is a simple machine frame, which we have, along with the netherite scrap, the diamond gear, two gold ingots, and two plastics. So we do need another diamond gear. That's completely fine. We'll take four diamonds and we'll also take our blazing blood tank once again. Let's quickly swap this out here for the blazing blood tank. And I'm fairly certain that will be enough lava for this. It is 50 millibuckets per melt there. That is completely fine. Over in our dissolution chamber, I assume is where that simple machine frame is. It is indeed. I don't know if breaking and replacing this will get rid of that latex. It does, perfect. Okay, that's good because it means we can go ahead and grab a bucket of pink slime from our tank around here. That's going to be used for the advanced machine frame. We have got over three buckets. Nice. The Spawner does seem to have stopped working. I assume that that is due to the fact that we don't have enough lava inside of the magmatic dynamo. And so one thing I definitely should do is I definitely should get a lever and use that to re-enable our mob mesher so that these mobs don't uh, overrun us. Can I flick that from here? I can. Look at that. <laughs> the mob mesher is just so incredibly powerful. It's insane. But either way, netherite scrap, Acquired over here, our diamonds should be ready to extract. They are indeed, is that everything? We just need two gold and the plastic. That is gonna be fine. Two gold we have, and then how much plastic do we currently have? We've got six, nice. So we'll take you, we'll take you, and let's go and throw all of this over into the dissolution chamber to finally give us everything that we need to get that advanced machine frame, which should then in turn be everything that we need in order to make the Crusher. Unfortunately here, we're running into a power issue. This must require a large amount of power. Annoyingly, it needs 18,000 redstone flux and the um, and the dissolution chamber can only hold 10,000. Then it looks like we're not pumping in the remaining power fast enough. Okay, real quick, let me see about making a few more of these hardened integral components and then we'll see if we can't push this craft through. All right, so a few more hardened upgrade kits later. These now all have one and this is holding rock steady and so we should have our advanced machine frame nice so let's come back over here let's craft that up into the mob crusher we just need two standard minecraft books one and two i did make an ingot cast over here like a real gold ingot cast so that we can uh, repeatedly pull out ingots without having to resort to using the sand casts because pulling out that much invar uh, manually with the sand cast was going to be a pain in the backside but we now just need two more gold ingots to get one more gold gear and I think that's basically everything in terms of making the mob crusher. It is. And at that point, the final hurdle that we have to jump over is setting up an area for the wither to spawn where it's not going to destroy things. And it's not going to fly around and destroy things because we need to be able to point the mob crusher at the wither. And speaking of that, we're going to need some upgrades, a range upgrade that is for 
the mob crusher. And so I am going to once again divert our latex over to the tank over here. Let's do this and get ready to disconnect this. We want that to go over into here. We need a thousand millibuckets again because we want to make a big range upgrade. Ideally, we would make a full box of witherproof blocks. Now, in this pack, all of the witherproof blocks have the same recipe. Even stuff like tinted glass that normally you can use and normally is much cheaper in this pack requires that you make the witherproof block from the witherproof block mod. For this, we need obsidian and netherite ingots. Again, thankfully, we now do have the ability to make netherite ingots, assuming that we're getting some of this ancient debris in. We are indeed. Again, it does need its own drawer over here. Let's do this and we'll take that all back out. We can smelt these down into netherite scrap and then we can, of course, take that netherite scrap and we can use it to make netherite ingots. Unfortunately, it is four netherite scrap per netherite ingot and it's one netherite ingot per witherproof block. Now, I have done some testing and I think with as few as six witherproof blocks, I think we can set up a, uh, an automatic wither killing system that holds the wither in place so that it doesn't escape and that keeps it at arm's reach from the crusher so that it doesn't destroy the crusher and allows the crusher to do its work. So to make six witherproof blocks though, we do need six netherite, which means we are going to need to get 24 netherite scrap. Right now, with these three, we've got seven and... Here, we've got eight ancient comb, but with a 50% chance, this is only approximately four more ancient debris. That's going to take us to 11 in total. And so we do still have a little ways to go, but at this point, it's kind of mostly just a case of waiting for this ancient comb to come in so that we can process it through into netherite. All right, so a fair amount of netherite scrap later, 24 to be specific, that should be enough for us to make six netherite ingots. And... If my calculations are correct, six netherite ingots should be the exact right amount to make six witherproof blocks. And these six witherproof blocks should be all that we need to hold the wither in place for long enough for our crusher to kill the wither. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to do something a little bit janky. Uh, the reason it's going to be a little bit janky is because right now we don't have anywhere near enough netherite or really anywhere near enough obsidian to build a witherproof box that could go down right here. Eventually, my plan is to build this witherproof box and put the crusher down, maybe just here or maybe on the other side. But we're going to just set the wither up here and just set it up to be auto-killed over and over again, generating nether stars for us. However, right now, we don't really have that option, again, because we don't have anywhere near enough witherproof blocks. And to get the number of witherproof blocks that we need would take a staggering amount of netherite and obsidian. And so instead... What we're going to do is something a little bit cheesy, but we're going to try and put down the fewest number of blocks possible to spawn and hold the wither in place. And then using a fairly large range upgrade, we're going to put the crusher quite far away from the wither so that as it explodes, it's not going to break the crusher, but it's still going to be within range to actually kill the wither once that wither spawns in. And so let's take a bucket of latex here. We are going to lose 500 millibuckets of pink slime, but I think that's fine. We can always get more of that fairly easily and then just like with the iron range upgrade that we made previously here we're probably going to go with maybe the diamond range upgrade it probably doesn't need to be quite this big but we do have a staggering number of diamonds we already have the glass panes and is it just iron nuggets or is it redstone it is a redstone that's fine one two perfect we'll whack all of those into the dissolution chamber just like we did earlier in the episode boom and boom and then with that, we should be able to put the crusher quite far away from the wither and still have it be able to kill the wither and, more importantly, pick up the mob drops. So, speaking of which, what I will do here as well is I will go ahead and steal another bucket of lava from our tank, and I'm also going to move this magmatic dynamo that's currently, or that was powering, our mob slaughter factory. We're going to use this to power our crusher. And so, back over here, basically, what we'll do, I think, this cobblestone, of course, is very temporary, but what we will do is we'll place down the crusher right about here. And that's going to face out in this direction. Again, if we click the show working area button right now, it is tremendously small. But if we put in this range add-on, you'll see that it gets tremendously big. And so now this mob crusher is able to kill any mobs within that area. And it will kill them instantly, which is kind of a benefit that it has over the, uh, the mob masher. And we don't have to push mobs towards the crusher. Just any mob anywhere inside this area will get killed by the crusher, which is perfect. And so what we're going to do is we're going to build 
a, a platform that's a little ways away, far enough away that as the weather explodes, it doesn't actually do any damage to uh, kind of the main part of our platform. But of course, we do still want to be within this area that the Mob Crusher can work in. I think this should be fine. We'll go a few blocks extra out just to be safe. And then what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and place down one weatherproof block on the ground like this. We're then going to go three blocks up like this. And then we're going to put down weatherproof blocks around the entirety of this cobblestone piece, including on the top like this. So you want to have one weatherproof block, then a two block gap, and then this kind of block here that is surrounded by weatherproof blocks. And in theory here, if we spawn the wither in such a way that it spawns here, it should get trapped with its head kind of in this gap, unable to move, unable to break really any of our stuff, and it should give the crusher here enough time to kill the wither. There's only one way to find out whether or not we've actually done that correctly, and that is going to be to grab some soul sand and some of those wither skeleton skulls. So you want to make sure when building the wither like this, that you put down the kind of tail of the soul sand where you want the wither to spawn. So you want to build it like this. I believe you could build it in the opposite direction, but you want to make sure this piece, the tail piece, is under the center. And we are going to lose some cobblestone here, but that is completely fine. We're going to do something like this. We're then going to run quickly away from the wither. And then over here from a nice safe distance, we should see the wither explode. It should just destroy cobblestone. It shouldn't destroy anything else. And then the crusher should hopefully just kill it. Nice. The crusher, much like the other machines from Industrial Foregoing, does have this uh, green progress bar here. And so it can take up to five seconds for the crusher to actually do its job, depending on whereabouts in this uh, process time you actually put the wither down. But there we go. We have our first nether star. And we also have the ability to really get almost as many more of them as we like. Because soul sand, of course, is super easy to make using our nether warp blocks. And we could also look at getting uh, soul sand B as well. And now that we have the Wither Skeleton Bees, we can also use those to get more Wither Skeleton Skulls, and of course use those Wither Skeleton Skulls along with that Soul Scent to spawn more Withers and get more Nether Stars. And next time, chat, we're going to come back and we're going to use those Nether Stars, or start using these Nether Stars, to upgrade our resource production. Because we are kind of at capacity, maybe even above capacity, for this little bee apartment complex. We've got way too many bees crammed into way too small a space, and so the plan starting next episode is going to be to fix that by building some apiaries it does take at least one nether star per apiary if we look at the recipe here one apiary requires one nether star and if you want to upgrade to a tier two you need another one a tier three needs four more and then a tier four needs four more and so we do need quite a lot of nether stars but of course we also do have the option of getting two nether star blocks and using those as a way of getting the wither bee nectar block so that we can then use the uh, the wither bee to get even more nether stars using the wither honeycomb which is also an option as well not ideal given that it's only a 10 percent drop chance and so it would be ideal if we could get this system automated i think uh, preferably but all of that is a problem for future isaac for now i'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this episode of sky bees 2 there